just change this right here to changing muscle length. And then muscle shortens or lengthens during contraction. Yeah, it gets more into the type where it talks about the two different types of isotonic, which is concentric and eccentric. Yeah. Yeah. So just remember, isometric stays the same. Isotonic changes in length, either shortening as concentric, lengthening as eccentric. Right. So if we go from this to this, what kind of contraction is that? Right. So it's the, the amount of tension developed is the same by the changes in length, and then it lactates. So the, there's no tension, now it develops tension, it stays the same, and then it relaxes. And so then when you have an isometric, the tension is going to change. Right. So when you start out with an isometric contraction, you can press a little, or you can press more, and you get to the point where that's all you've got, and then it, the tension can release, but it hasn't changed in length. So then here's an isometric. And so the length doesn't change but then the tension can develop to a peak and then relax, but the length doesn't change. fibers that are all wired together with the same nerve are all going to contract. That's what it means by all or none. So if you have a nerve that's going into a muscle, everything that's stimulated by that same nerve is all going to contract or it's not going to contract at all. That's how the all or none principle works. talked about an agonist or a prime mover. Agonist is, an, is another name for a prime mover. An antagonist is something that goes against it. It's like when you talk about when you're you know, reading books and so you talk about the main character and then you have the, the villain or something that would be the antagonist, right? Like Snidely Whiplash. Right? So the antagonist is a muscle that counteracts the agonist or the prime mover. So if we're talking about the bicep as a prime mover, that would be the antagonist. And then here, this gets into the thing that I was talking about, where you have, it depends if one, one end of the joint is fixated, like the, the, the pectoralis can move the origin towards the insertion or go the other way around. And this can happen with synergism and antagonists and fixator, so you can read that over. So now we'll talk about a term that's called a motor unit, right? or a neuromuscular functional unit. Okay? So basically we're talking about we're linking a nerve to a muscle. Okay, so this is the muscle, then here's the nerve. Okay. And then that nerve's gonna split up and it's gonna innervate different fibers. Okay. All right, so that's a motor unit where you have a nerve that's going in and it's innervating certain muscle fibers. Okay. And this the number of fibers in a motor unit vary. Okay? You can have a whole bunch of 
nerves that, I mean, a, one nerve that a whole bunch of muscles, or you can have a nerve that goes to only a smaller number of motor fibers. Okay, so if you, like, compare, let's say that your, your glute muscle, okay, that is a muscle that doesn't need a lot of line control. Usually what you need that for, like, your glute and your hamstrings is to you know, jump and move. It's pretty much you're going to shoot, fire them all off. You know, when the, the Jamaican sprinter in the Olympics, or, Saint Bolt? Yeah, 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 Bolt. Right? When he's in the starting blocks, his muscles just want to go. But there's times when you need more fine muscle control, like in your hands, okay? Like some of the other the relay guys, they didn't have as much fine control they needed when they were dropping the gun, right? Okay, so when you need fine control, so in, so in your big muscles, like your glute and your hamstrings, there's going to be the nerve fiber can go to a whole bunch of muscles. Because you want those things to work. So one ball can activate a whole bunch of nerve fibers. Because basically all you want to do is really push that muscle hard. But if you need more fine control, kind of like when you start doing and put needles in, right? You need to have fine control. So you want to have a, a lot of nerve fibers, and each one of those nerve fibers only exposed to a few muscle fibers. So the ratio is going to be different. So if you have a muscle that needs fine control, or if you want, to, you want to have a muscle that has varying degrees of contraction, so let's say now I, I contract a few of the muscle fibers, I mean, a couple of those nerve units are activated, I activate a few more, a few more, a few more, so you build the level of contraction. Okay. If you have a muscle that you don't care, that you want to just be able to first, you know, a sudden sprint type of an impulse, then you can have one nerve that goes to a whole bunch of muscle fibers. But if you need more fine control, then you're going to have one nerve fiber that's only going to go to a few muscle fibers, and you're going to have a lot of those different nerve fibers, so you have more control. So that's how the motor unit and the ratio of how many nerve, uh, nerve cell fibers are going in compared to how many muscle fibers they have. So the bottom line is muscles that need fine control, like your hands, your eyes, things like that, they're going to have one nerve fiber is going to go to a small number of muscle fibers versus if you have a larger muscle that doesn't need as much control, you're going to have a smaller number of muscle fibers going to a larger <coughs> muscle fibers. So here's your motor unit basically. So here's one motor unit. So there's that one nerve that supplies these different muscle fibers. And here's another motor unit that supplies other muscle fibers. Okay, so the same muscle is going to have lots of motor units. And the more fine control you need, the more motor units that muscle is going to have, versus if it's a bulk muscle to generate strength, it's, going to have, it's not going to have as many motor units. So is the all or none principle applies just to that similar fiber? Uh, to that motor unit, yeah. That motor unit. Right. Because remember, we said some certain things apply to the individual muscle fiber, meaning there's an all or none principle for that muscle fiber. And that muscle fiber contracts, the whole muscle fiber does. And then when that one motor unit contracts, all the nerve fibers that are part of that unit contract. You can't just do this one and skip those other two. It's all or none. But it doesn't mean the whole muscle, all the fibers of the muscle don't necessarily contract at the same time. Because the more fibers that you have, the more nerve motor units you have, the more control or varying degrees of contraction that you can buy. You don't have that many. You know, it's like if you have well, the transmission only has you know, two gears versus if it has a lot of gears. So what motor unit is, is that is one nerve and all the muscle fibers that it supplies. It looks like the same side right okay. So again, large weight-bearing muscles have large motor units, meaning that there's a lot of muscle fibers for each nerve fiber, and then fine control ones have a lot of few amount of muscle fibers compared to the nerve fiber. So then one motor unit is going to contract, have a weak contraction through that entire muscle fiber. But if you have a lot of motor units, you're going to have to use a lot of those nerve impulses to get the whole muscle to contract all together. 